Hello and welcome back to the channel. The year is now 2026 and it's cold. The CNC plasma cutter coming in the last few days and the bed has been frozen up. Pulled some big lumps of ice out but it doesn't really matter because we'll just turn the plasma cutter on in a minute and just melt it all. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're going to do with that. Um, the next thing we are doing, you can see we've got these two lengths of steel in. This were, these came just before Christmas. And this is for a project where we are extending one of the sheds. In the last video, we had the Tom here to come and help us put the bolts in with the total station and get all them set in the right place. And now what we've got to do, we've got to cut the, um, cut the plates out on the plasma cutter and then basically just weld all these ends on uh, and paint it. So it's, it should be a nice, quick, easy job. Everything's loaded, ready to go with the plasma cutter. Um, Newark Steel have sent all this steel pre-cut so I haven't got to cut anything because when we when we used the total station to put the bolts in we were able to create this like drawing and then uh, you know it gave me the measurements so I just sent the measurements to Newark Steel and then within a couple of days they just come everything's ready so it makes my life a lot easier so this should be really quick and then once this is done we'll start probably putting it up put the wood in put the roof on and then that's that bit ready to go so I suppose the best thing to do now is start the plasma cutter up and get welding. So this first part here is the upright post. The second part here is basically this RSJ just here like that. And that has been cut at 10 degrees, what we wanted. So nice and easy. I'm gonna turn the heater on in a minute as well. I could do with a bit better heater because that doesn't really get this workshop very very warm at all especially when it's cold so i've had it everything pre-red oxided as well because it's just it's just a lot easier to have it done like that because then it can sit outside and not bothered if it goes rusty so it's not that much more money so to cut all these uh these plates out here turn the camera around uh 10 minutes to do what everything we need to let's move this ice melt it come on come on that's heavy that one done i just want um a bit smaller plate for the cleats that go on top to hold the wood oh yeah These are now our cleats that hold the wood on. So I've just oversized them slightly like that. One there. And then there's, uh, there's six on each RSJ. Another one down there like that. Might just reinforce them behind as well. Just putting the 
triangles out there. Probably nice and easy. So that triangle fits in there like that. Uh, then I've just got to cut a bit of flat out. Um, then all that can be welded up. Just welded these cleats on as well up here. Put a bit of gusset in there. We'll do that in a minute as well. Hopefully, with a little bit of luck, we've got the plasma torch, we're going to put this in here and just basically screw it up. This arm just holds it and then you program it in with this little screen. I've put the memory stick in the side there, so I've transferred the drawing off of the swift cut onto this arc droid and hopefully it is going to cut. We need, we need the holes here, so that stanchion's all completely done now. Uh, we now need the holes for this and instead of drilling them hopefully the plasma cutter is just i'm just going to zero it to the correct position and it's just going to uh it's just going to cut them out but we'll see how effective it is all right so that's it we've got a drawing just here i'm just going to zero it so it um calibrates itself and uh that's basically what we've got to cut out just here i'm going to put these holes like that plate onto there like that. So I'm just gonna zero it. So if I pull that round here, moves that little green dot look. If I screw that, we can set the height. And it's on that line there, which I've marked. Where is it? About there somewhere. Now I need to check with this arm, that green bit there, that should come down, there's that corner. Yeah, it's pretty much bang on. Check that other corner. Yep. And then there. And we should be able to. I just need I just need to um turn the turn the feed speed down. I'm about six hundred. Right, we'll give it a run. Just want to make sure the pierce height is correct and the feed rate so it's about to come along and do the first hole so we should see it go down touch it move back up that's done the height that's doing the pierce now it's doing the hole like that and then it should move on to the next one hopefully Next hole. I think we're ready to run. We'll turn the plasma on and give it a go. Just had a little go. Just done a couple of centre pieces, but I messed it up because I moved it by accident. But I can turn the plasma on and off. Right, just dry running it again. I had a bit of a problem. I don't know why it kept cutting out. I think, I don't know if it's this uh, little cheap um, plasma cutter but uh, it's gonna be easier for me if I hold the torch, like the torch there, if I just put my finger under there and pull the trigger when I need to be, and then it's gonna do the rest. It's relatively straightforward, but I haven't really got time to be learning how to do it. I just wanna pull the trigger and go. Oh, it's burnt the plug out. So the problem that's happened is it should have been on this blue plug, but I haven't got a blue plug. So I've only, it's just blown the fuse in the plug because I put this in. So we're actually going to, we just, there we go. We have had success with the bolt. Right, let's try that again. 
see how we get on this time. Put it down, up. blown again um so what it's done this time it's uh, blown the heat trip on the uh, extension lead but um i need to get a blue plug fitted so i can uh, i can use it properly but you can see what it's going to do you can see it's it started cutting the holes but got halfway round, and um just keeps blowing the plasma cutter basically because i'm running it off like a 13 amp plug where it needs to be on a bit heavier duty one so I think I'm just going to get the drill out for the time being and just mag drill them out and then um, we'll have a look at that at a later date. So it has actually got them in pretty much the right, well, bang on the right place, look. So look, it's half cut, it's half cut these ones and then obviously I keep losing power. It's pierced these ones, but it has pierced them in pretty much the right place because my plan was to g clamp this when i want to cut some holes like this i could put a big g clamp around that box and take it up the side of like one of the rsjs up there and then just press go and then it'll cut all the holes out without having to mag drill them but um in this instance i'm not i'm not equipped for the job i need to get some uh, different power supply in so once i've drilled these holes i've got one more bit of welding to do just there but then that is the last job to do um, before we paint everything, and we're going to have a look at the um, we're going to have a look at the airless paint sprayer because there's always been a few questions about the uh, paint sprayer, and it's uh, quite a good bit of kit actually. I should have put some uh, spray on it, shouldn't I? That's quicker. Right, so next job, we're gonna paint them. Uh, we're gonna paint them green like everyone, everything else we've got here is green, um, unless it's been galvanized. The diesel heater over there is just warming the tin of paint up. It's very cold outside. And uh, this is what we're going to use to paint it. It's a decorator's airless paint sprayer. So what they do, they've just got like a big piston inside that goes up and down. And um, yeah, you don't, you basically put this pipe into the, into the tub of paint and it just sucks it out. So you don't have to keep filling it up. And you've got like a big long hose on it as well that you obviously just, so to paint all both these, it'll probably take, it's gonna take longer to clean this out than it is to paint them. So this is a Graco GX21. Um, it wasn't very expensive, like I say, decorators use them to paint people's houses. So um, yeah, I wanna get these painted before the weekend so they can dry over the weekend and then next week we'll be, uh, we'll be putting them up. Getting warm now, Russ. It will take quite a lot of thick stuff, but it's better to go through when it's when it's runny. Now I've warmed it all up. There's the suction pipe like that. In there like that. Turn it on. And that is it now primed. So once the green paint's come through, we'll paint.
that's one side completely done and then we'll just get this end done it's great you don't have to keep filling it up So that's that done. You see the quality of it, it's a lot better than putting it on with a paintbrush. I've got it all over my dad's chair. But um, yeah, so now we've just got to clean the gun out. Didn't take very long, did it? Just gonna empty this green paint out and put some thinners back through it again. Paint thinners through it. Load it up with with paint thinners if I put that. Oh, got paint everywhere. Put that on top of there like that to hold it. We'll spray the rest outside. And turn the nozzle like that to spray all the green paint out until the thinness come through and then it's cleaned out that's it so that is now basically going to dry over the weekend and in a future video not too far in the future we're gonna put it up to make the new extension on the shed that I've been needing to do for a long time and uh, make the spr new spray store. So I hope you've all enjoyed watching that. Let us know what you think in the comments and um, had someone here a minute ago. Bought me a load of beer. So watch out for one of those videos and uh, you'll see me in that video. So see you all soon, bye bye.